odds are you clicked on this video because you've been told that you have degenerative dis. Now, as a physical therapist, I know how scary this diagnosis can feel. You go in for some back pain that you've been having and come out with a diagnosis that maybe you've never even heard of or a diagnosis that just sounds scary just because of the words that are in it. There's something is going on in your spine and it's not good. And you may also be experiencing high levels of pain. Now, there are three things that I have found after seeing lots of different people with back pain. Three things that you need to avoid when it comes to degenerative disc disease. Because I want you to know something. It is possible to thrive with degenerative disc disease. It is possible to go on, find pain relief without surgery, without some other procedure, that you can do this. Now, of course, there's a time and a place for surgery, and we're going to talk about that. But I want you to know firsthand that there is hope. You can find relief, and you can get out there and do what you love doing, even with degenerative disc disease. The whole point of this Keep the Adventure Alive channel is to show you how to make what you love possible, even when dealing with chronic pain. So. I'm very glad you're here. And with that, we are going to get started right away. When it comes to degenerative disc disease, one thing to avoid is a quick decision for surgery. I know that it can be very tempting. Thinking about something's going on in my spine, my spine is very important, so I need to take action. I need to get surgery to help this. Surgery is, seems like the only way to fix this. Actually, surgery has been shown not to be very effective when it comes to degenerative disc disease. You think that, hey, if you fix a part of my spine, my pain's going to go away. I'm going to not have to think about this pain anymore. Unfortunately, it can continue to persist even after surgery. It can also lead, it can also have some risks. I mean, just like any other surgery. But th these risks can be a little higher, especially when you're going into the spine. Your spine houses a lot of nerves. These nerves control your muscles. There can be some numbness and tingling. There can be some residual nerve damage that makes them a little more ineffective, meaning it can impact your muscle strength and all kinds of different things. So research is pointing to the fact that you it is almost always recommended that you try some degree of conservative management first. Okay, so what's conservative management? This is very important because a lot of times you're not necessarily given this as an option. So this is one thing to advocate for yourself. If you're going to a doctor's appointment, if you're going to even see you know, a physical therapist, you're going to see a medical professional, this is a great question to ask about what types of conservative management do you recommend? Now, conservative management essentially is non-surgical interventions. So there are lots of different options. Some of the more popular ones are lifestyle changes. So this can include the foods you eat. This can include the sleep quality that you're getting, the amount of stress you're under. These surprisingly can impact your pain levels and your sensitivity to pain. There are also things like movement, exercise, and unfortunately, this is one thing that people really tend to limit when you get a diagnosis of degenerative disc disease because it can be scary. You know, if something's going on in your spine, you're having pain, well, you think maybe right off the bat that movement's going to make it worse, that I need to limit my movement to essentially save my joints or save my spine. Movement is absolutely crucial, but it has to be the right type of movement because here's the deal. When you have degenerative disc disease in your spine, you have something called vertebrae, which are bones that make up the spine. Then you have this little squishy part in between. That little squishy part can be viewed as kind of cartilage, like in the cartilage in your knee, etc. It essentially helps to absorb the force that's coming through your body, protecting those vertebrae or those bony segments. Now, when you have degenerative disc disease, those little squishy parts might become a little stiffer. They may become a little less effective. So what happens is now your spine is relying on muscle support and other structures to provide that support, to absorb some of that stress. But if we avoid movement, then 
it really becomes the fact of those muscles aren't able to give the support. So then more stress may be going to your spine, which we don't particularly want. It can lead to more irritation and more pain. We're going to talk more about inactivity in the second one, but movement is absolutely crucial. Physical therapy also falls into the conservative management, which can be very effective when it comes to degenerative disc disease. One thing with physical therapy is it's always good to get a second perspective or get a second opinion, even with a physical therapist. So if you're not necessarily vibing with the person or maybe you're not really seeing any results, you can absolutely go seek someone else out. It's just the same thing like if you were getting a second opinion from a doctor or a surgeon. So absolutely keep an open mind about that, that just because one physical therapist didn't particularly work, you could seek out someone else, get a second set of eyes on your situation, and it can actually be really powerful. It's very, very worth it to try some of these conservative techniques. I have on this channel and on this, if you're listening on this podcast, lots of different resources when it comes to looking at the foods you eat, lots of different resources when it comes to looking at managing stress levels or finding ways naturally to relieve your pain. These conservative management efforts, though, do need some consistency. Unfortunately, they're not always as quick as we want them to be. The results aren't always immediate. It does require some consistency over at least three months, but maybe even pushing into six months. Looking at movement, looking at the foods you eat, and be consistent with it for this three to six months. If you're truly looking to avoid surgery, we have to give this conservative management a good effort. Now, surgery does have a time and a place, and that is very important. But after being consistent with this, if you don't necessarily experience pain relief or if you aren't back to where you want to be and you've tried physical therapy, you've tried consistently looking at your nutrition, you've tried consistently improving your sleep quality and managing your stress and finding outlets to relieve that stress and you're just still not finding pain relief, then it may be appropriate to start exploring other options. But it's important to note that these conservative management efforts do require a consistent effort and different methods. So trying a combination of movement and changing your food and looking at your sleep quality, a combination of these things can really be powerful. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, secondly, I do want to go into avoiding inactivity. So avoiding being sedentary, avoiding sitting more, avoiding laying down more. And I know that if you're watching this, you're like, wow, I am in a ton of pain. How am I supposed to avoid not moving? Well, there are literally a billion different movements out there, different movements that your body may like, that just because certain movements hurt or certain exercises hurt, does not mean that they all are going to hurt. It's so important to find movements that actually make you feel good. And let me tell you right now, it is possible. I had one client who was, she was younger and dealing with pain from degenerative disc disease. She felt like she was bashing her head against the wall, trying all different kinds of things, but nothing seemed to relieve her pain. She was trying pain cream. She was trying going to the chiropractor. She was trying all kinds of different pain medications. And she just kept finding short-term relief that the pain would continue to come back. And one of the things that she was really struggling with was getting into a regular exercise routine because she felt that everything she did seemed to flare her pain up. But we started working together and she was able to find movements that did not hurt, that did not flare up her pain. She was able to get back into exercising regularly with the right movements, building strength in the right areas. And now she's out hiking with her kids. Now she's able to get through a workday without being limited by her pain. She is able to do the things that she wants to without being severely limited or planning her entire day around her pain. It is possible, but we have to find the right movement. And now I know you might be thinking, okay, that's great, but how the heck am I supposed to find the right movement? 
I have lots of resources. So if you click down in the description, if you're on YouTube or in their show notes, if you're watching on the, or if you're listening on the podcast, I have lots of different resources to help you start finding movements that can be beneficial. If you find something that flares up your pain, I know it can be very easy to get discouraged, but I want you to remember there are so many different movements out there that if one causes you pain, there are so many other options. So don't give up too easily on the movement aspect. If you feel a muscle spasm, if you feel more pain, these are signs that maybe the movement you're doing is not the right movement for you. But we have to approach it that way instead of saying, you know, hey, movement doesn't work. I have to try, you know, I can only find relief with pain medications or I can only do this or maybe I do need surgery. Finding movements that do help is so, 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 so powerful. And it's more than just core strength. You may have heard, you know, I have back pain. I need to strengthen my core. It's more than core strength. We have to increase the variety of the movements that you're doing. Walking can be helpful, but sometimes walking can be painful. If walking can be painful, it's, okay, let's look at something else, say, of maybe one thing that can actually be really powerful is actually walking backwards. Obviously, watching for balance and making sure that you're safe, not going to trip over anything, but walking backwards can be one way to help relieve some of that pain. You're essentially working the muscles that are opposite to the muscles that you work walking forwards walking sideways or even just stepping sideways. There are so many different things besides core strengthening that can be helpful for degenerative discs. So check out those resources down in the podcast notes or in the description in the YouTube, um, under the YouTube video, because that will help guide you to some things to potentially start with. Okay, now number three, the third thing to avoid when it comes to degenerative discs. This one can be a tough one. So I want you to avoid relying on passive. Passive treatments, meaning things that are done to you, but you don't particularly do anything active. So if we look at, say, massage, we look at, say, a back brace, we look at sometimes even some like chiropractic care can be considered passive. If we medications can fall into this category, topical uh, Pain creams can fall into this category. Now, I'm not saying these things are bad. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do these things. But I want you to think about something. If you are looking at what you're doing for degenerative disc disease, what you're doing to help your pain, if your list looks like a lot of passive things, well, I go to massage once a month. Um, I go to, you know, say the chiropractor once every two weeks or something. I'm taking this supplement or I'm taking this medication. A lot of those things are passive. You also have to add in some active because what's happening, say in massage, for example, massage can feel good. Massage can help bring blood flow to your muscles, bring blood flow to the area, and then it can help pump some of those irritating cells out there, can pump some of that inflammation. That's going to help with pain relief, and that's why you feel pretty good. But if you think about it, then if you get a massage and you go home and maybe you just rest. Just watch TV. You know, you don't particularly do much other activity. Well, those inflammatory cells, those irritating cells are going to come back. And that's why you're only going to experience short-term pain. But let's think about it like this. So if you do a massage or some sort of passive treatment, then you come home and just do some simple movements. Now we're maximizing this blood flow. Now we're maximizing this muscle lengthening so your muscles don't feel so tight. Now we're maximizing the benefits from this passive treatment. So passive and active treatments need to be combined. Again, not saying these passive treatments are bad. You can use some topical ointments. You can use whatever feels good to you. But make sure you're combining it with something else, something active, something you're doing, whether that's walking, whether that's adding in strength training, something that makes you feel good, something to help you to maximize these benefits. Now, again, these simple movements are going to be down in the show notes, down in the description of the video. 
so you can get started on those. It doesn't have to be a crazy 60 minute workout. Even just doing three movements a few times each or spending five minutes doing some sort of movement, that can be such a great start when it comes to finding pain relief with degenerative disc disease. But I have a lot of people who are really hard on themselves saying, you know, I don't have 30 minutes to exercise. I don't have 60 minutes to exercise. So I'm just not going to do anything. But people are honestly amazed at how simple the movements need to be and how even how little the exercise needs to be, starting at five minutes a day, how impactful that can be on Another caveat, kind of a bonus thing to avoid, I want you to think about the small wins that you're achieving. I want you to avoid thinking about, okay, I'm still having pain, so this isn't working. Instead, we think about the severity and the frequency of the pain. Those are the things that we're looking to reduce, not simply looking at a black and white pain, no pain. If you're decreasing the severity of your pain, if you're decreasing the frequency of your pain, that is meaning that you're moving in the right direction. So I want you to think about that. As you're moving through some of these conservative treatments, you're moving through some of these ways to manage pain with degenerative disc disease, think about, okay, what is maybe something I've accomplished this week? Well, I didn't have as much pain when I was trying to sleep last night. Or I was able to walk a little further, or I got back from the mailbox and I didn't have as much pain. These sorts of things are going to carry you through. These sorts of things are going to motivate you to continue through this process. Like I said, it's not quick, unfortunately, and it's not going to be particularly easy at times. But simple things can really impact your life when it comes to finding relief from degenerative disc disease. Please, please, please give conservative effort a good try. Be consistent, and you may be amazed at the impact that it can have on your degenerative disc disease. Now, share this with someone you know that has degenerative disc disease, because again, the whole goal of this is to give you hope and to show you what is possible. I want you to know your options and I want you to feel more informed in making your decisions and feel more confident about your decisions. You may feel more confident about your decision for surgery if you've tried six months of really everything you could think of or everything you've been recommended. You can make more informed decisions and feel more active in your health care. You can advocate for yourself, push for these things, ask for resources so that you can find some natural paperly. I hope that this was helpful for you and check out that description below for more resources on degenerative disc disease. Thanks for listening.